With some 10 million men at war, the solution to fill the labor shortage is both unexpected and obvious. Women. Women across the entire spectrum of race, economic class, and educational backgrounds take jobs never before deemed appropriate or even possible for them to perform. The poster image of the woman in overalls wrench in hand becomes the symbol of the new 1940s woman. Rosie the Riveter will become one of the most enduring icons of the war. With her powerful physique, perfect features, Rosie encourages women to roll up their sleeves and get to work. With great dexterity and keen attention to detail, they often surpass their male counterparts. This raises other issues for men, including future job security. Oh, I don't mind my wife working, but who's going to run my home? It's okay now, but what about after the war? The women will have all the jobs. Despite the multitude of challenges at home and in the workplace, women continue to do their patriotic best. If I can qualify as an airplane worker at Vega, and with my hands help to keep him flying, I will feel that I am carrying on for him. I want to do a job that means more than working in a department store. Whether they are motivated by propaganda, patriotism, economic benefits, independence, or necessity, women join the workforce in unparalleled numbers. At the peak of war, 44, 19 million women are employed. Without the contribution of women, America could not have won the war. We are doing our share, but we're going to do infinitely more than we have done. We have in our town today two mothers, each of whom has given two sons already. And as I said before, we'll give our sons, we'll give our lives, but by the help and grace of God, we will not give up a free America or our democratic way of life.